Hello, good watching week. I'm really excited to be speaking to you today about IPFS and Falcon's first year in the mainnet network. So this has been a really tremendous year for Falcon. Uh, it is now celebrating the first uh, year. Um, and actually last week we had a week of events around the world um, with tons of different workshops and conversations and so on, uh, talking about everything that's been going on in the network since, since last year. Uh, so all, a ton of content uh, ended up being uh, put on YouTube and other platforms around the world. Uh, so be sure to check all of this out because this has all of the updates and news um, around the ecosystem. Uh, I'll just give you a kind of glimpse into a bunch of the things that's been going on um, uh, throughout the year. Web3 is the next generation of the internet. In a short time, computing has dramatically changed our species. Nowadays, our computing infrastructure powers trillions of devices and interconnected with billions of humans. And everything we do day to day is mediated by some kinds of programs or software. The software infrastructure that we use must be resilient, secure, and very viable. That's what Web3 is about, making the next generation of the web. Uh, as you know, Web3 is changing all kinds of things around the world. Um, many new kinds of uh, platforms are emerging. What I'm here to talk to you about today is IPFS and Falcon. IPFS is the data and content platform of Web3. It makes the web work peer to peer. And it's a, a widely used platform with hundreds of millions of browsers made around the world with tons of developer tools and tons of applications. And of course, Falcon, the storage network of Web3 built with IPFS. Uh, Falcon is a decentralized storage network. Uh, designed to store humanity's most important information. The network is built through uh, a collection of storage providers that come together to build a resilient and, and powerful uh, computing system. And Falcon is uh, part of the next wave of Web3. It is a, a proof of storage blockchain. It is by far the largest storage network of its kind. And it is now pushing uh, at a scale that is competing with, with centralized cloud services. And it is the main storage network of all of Web3. So all kinds of bridges are being built from Falcon to other blockchains and to other systems. Those systems are now starting to store uh, their data on Falcon. There's tons of activity and tons of growth. Uh, we're now pushing 12 exabytes of capacity, which is a, a truly phenomenal, massive amount of, um, of storage capacity. Congratulations to all of the storage provi providers for uh, achieving this amazing uh, there are thousands of storage providers around the world and hundreds of organizations experimenting, building applications, and so on. There's uh, tons of people around the world joining this movement to make the, the best storage network for the uh, Here's the, the capacity growing at a tremendous pace. Uh, the daily power addition, which is amazing. Uh, you can see the, um, how it doubled after the hyperdrive upgrade in the middle of the year. Now, the big thing that happened this year is the emergence of lots of clients and starting to scale the usage of the cloud network. We started building, building and all kinds of uh, systems to be able to onboard uh, large amounts of data. Really excited to show them just how much um, uh, usage has been growing across the network and have like this, this amazing growth rate. And it's also great to see the Falcon Plus program also working really well. It looks like, like it's growing exponentially. We'll see if, if that keeps up, that would be amazing. A lot of the usage of Falcon has been uh, helped by several developer on ramps, so things like NFT storage, and S3, and so on. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to NFT storage because it's like a, a very simple, easy to use system uh, that has managed to get uh, most of the NFTs in the world uh, stored through NFT storage. 6.5 million NFTs are stored by 6.5 thousand users. That's um, you know the bulk of, of all of the NFTs around the world, and this is growing at a pretty fast pace. So all of this uh, storage for NFTs is free for uh, for users provided by the platform companies, and this is used by most of the NFT platforms around the world. Uh, there's also phenomenal developer platforms being built around Bitcoin. Um, special shout out to Textile, Ceramic, Fission, and Fleet. Uh, there's of course a lot of other ones as well. So if you're building a, a new application and want to use the use Fox and want to use the, the powers of Web3, uh, be sure, sure to check these out. A, a great shout out to Estuary, which is a phenomenal application that um, came in to build a, a really needed uh, piece of infrastructure to help manage the, the, the decline storage provider connections. So it's been amazing to see the, the all of the improvements that history has driven uh, through the network and the growth rate that they've achieved. So, huge congratulations. 
Uh, also, a great mention to ChainSafe uh, Files, which now provide encrypted file storage. Uh, store your files, uh, back them up uh, to Hotline, and share them with, with your friends and with your coworkers and so on. Uh, and there's an, another great application, Face uh, Storage. So both of these high quality user experiences and starting to uh, feel just like a Web2 product, but now in, in Web3. I'd like to uh, give a huge shout out to Hunt. It makes it really easy for people to get on a call um, and then record that call and store it uh, store it to Hotline. Uh, they're really helping a lot of people around the world learn, especially in this, in this uh, difficult time. VideoCoin and Lightyear are two amazing networks that organize the work of a lot of service providers around the world. Uh, people to upload their videos and do transcoding, or even create video NFTs and, and then the uh, for the world. Uh, so, a small sampling of tons of applications and tools being built uh, around the ecosystem. One really great thing that's been happening cross chain bridges. There's more than one uh, venture here, as so it's been amazing to see smart contracts and other networks uh, to call out to platform directly. Uh, there's also been a phenomenal amount of progress in, in browsers, 250 million combined monthly active users within browsers that, that directly natively support IPFS. And that's a great entry point for all, all of these Web3 applications. Uh, so huge shout out to the Internet Archive and the Sonic Project and many others that have been gathering these amazing data sets, bringing them on, into the network. So one of the coolest things that's happened this year is Cloudpoint Green. This is a new project that started uh, to measure all of the energy usage of Cloudpoint. Um, and to then be able to offset it all by buying renewable energy credits. This is a really cool uh, system that's going to make uh, Cloudpoint into a net carbon negative uh, process. So the goal is to uh, not just offset all the energy you use, but actually offset much more than that uh, to make sure that Cloudpoint uh, in every economy that it's, that it's a part of um, is creating a much uh, greener environment. One of the amazing things that's happened this year is the creation of the Builders Fund that helps developers learn build, launch, and grow their applications. The developers can come to the Cloudpoint network, learn how to build applications in Web3, um, use uh, one of the many hackathons running throughout the year to test it out, to learn about the systems, to try building something. Um, and if their idea um, is promising and they want to pursue it, uh, then there's a lot, lots of brands and accelerators lined up to help them turn their idea into a startup, feeding into um, ecosystem investors and other, uh, and other groups to help support them. You can think of this as like the startup reactor helping lots of builders to start their businesses on Cloudpoint. Just been amazing to see this huge amount of hackathons around the world. Make sure to check them out and, and look ahead to the ones coming up in November and December. One of the huge achievements this year is that four accelerators will graduate 60 teams um, this year. That's 60 new startups built on Web3 with Cloudpoint. Uh, here are some examples of the amazing uh, kinds of businesses that we've been built. Mona, a 3D metaverse museum that enables you to create rooms and mint them as NFTs. WeatherXM, which is weather, a weather on demand network uh, that enables providers to set up uh, some weather infrastructure to measure the weather around them and provide that information to the network. And CAD Gravity, a, a, a tool for pricing and client management uh, for cloud storage providers. Ballast is a system to securely distribute software, leveraging the power of IPFS and Cloudpoint to do hash linking across uh, all kinds of software artifacts, then engage, to token gate high quality content uh, through the use of NFT, so you can start to monetize specific uh, kinds of content. Uh, and of course, that'll, uh, using peer to peer to connect people uh, in video and then be able to record it and store the platform. So, uh, this amazing builder's funnel, uh, leveraging de developer resources, feeding into hackathons, then into um, grants and accelerators, and from there to um, an investor network, is paving the way for lots of startups and lots of new, new businesses around the Falcon network. So, if you're excited about building something, if you want to try things out in Web3, uh, just join a hackathon, uh, try it out, and connect with the accelerators. Great, so you want to get involved in the network. Uh, so, how do you do that? Uh, first and foremost, I would encourage you to become a client. Try storing your data on the platform if you're not doing it already. So maybe start with uh, storing your personal files, try out the same files or uh, space on storage. Or if you're a developer, um, try out one of the many developer on-ramps, uh, the one that uh, suits your use case best. If you're storing NFTs, then you're going to try NFT on storage. If you're storing a lot of files in, in a web free style application, you can try web free storage. Um, if you're doing, uh, if you are building a whole um, web application um, and want a, a very simple experience, you can try a click. Um, if you're doing more interesting things with 
um, the web apps where you need to model the data structures and you know, build kind of um, distributed databases and so on, uh, definitely uh, encourage you to check out Textile, Ceramic, and Vision, um, three amazing um, uh, developer platforms that are emerging uh, to help you do all of that. And if, if you're storing large amounts of data where you need a, a framework for data integrity, I encourage you to check out Starlink Vision. You may also want to become a storage provider. There's a lot of guides around on the internet that you can check out. And I especially recommend watching the videos. There's many videos uh, from many storage providers sharing their knowledge, talking about their setups. Uh, you could also go and build a new project, app, or startup, leveraging the builder funnel that we've created. Uh, watch some of the amazing content that's been gathered over time in the, in the platform YouTube channel and in other video channels. Um, and if you're uh, doing something uh, cool with uh, with Flatman, I encourage you to record a video and, and upload it and share it with your community. Uh, I also encourage you to join Platform Chat. Uh, you can join the community uh, through Slack. Uh, there are, of course, many other chat platforms uh, around uh, with different Platform groups, uh, so I recommend checking this out. Uh, you can also get involved by participating in the Platform Improvement Proposal uh, Forum. You can propose improvements to the protocol or discuss uh, potential improvements. Get involved. Platform is your network. Everybody wants to hear your voice. Uh, you can also become a core developer. Uh, join one of the teams that's building one of the key implementations and help build Falcon. Um You can learn about um, how many teams for the Falcon core devs call. Uh, and of course, uh, over time, we'll, we'll have more and more uh, ways of gathering feedback from the community. There's already a tool called Philpo that's been used there a few times. Um, I look forward to seeing many more of these kinds of tools to make decisions about uh, how, how the project should work. And of course, you can host and attend events. Uh, you can uh, gather a community. You can help share knowledge. Um, you can help uh, train people. You can help people uh, get to started with Blackboard and get, start to use it and use it to store their data. Um, and you can, of course, participate in one of the many hackathons. You know, I encourage you to to host a hackathon. That's one of the best ways to to contribute to the network. And one of the best ways that you can get involved in the Blackboard project is by joining one of the many teams in the network. There are hundreds of companies uh, in the network working on many different parts of the project, and if you would like to uh, participate, you can go in, um, and apply to work in one of them and get involved. All right, so I wanted to touch a little bit on what's next for Platinum. So um, one of the big things that's, that's uh, become very evident this year is scaling, the need for scaling and charting. Uh, so Web3 in general, um, really created a new kind of architecture uh, that prioritized security over scalability. And over time, different networks are starting to push towards scalability. Uh, but we're still really far away from um, the, the target to be able to beat uh, the Web2 platforms. And in order to do that, um, we believe that we need to break through the consensus bottleneck. So uh, consensus right now in blockchains uh, ends up creating a really strong bottleneck uh, that we need to be able to break through. And we propose to do it by going towards a, a, a charted network um, that can use uh, hierarchical consensus, a construction that, that we think um, uh, will work really well. So you can think of kind of the layer two, you know, things like Polygon and others uh, that are helping scale Ethereum. We're building similar kinds of structures uh, in Platform and UFC being discussed this year. Uh, so um, I think we should push for really strong markets. We really want to get to internet scale workloads. We want to get to trillions of transactions per second. Uh, and we want to get to fast local finality. So this is a really ambitious target, uh, but I think the Cloudpoint project can definitely hit it, um, and so I, I look forward to working with all of you to, uh, to make it a reality. This is a, a, a view into some of the uh, work that a Consensus Lab is doing, which is a, a group that is looking specifically at like, like a consensus part of, uh, part of blockchains, um, that is doing the research around consensus hierarchies uh, and thinking about how to scale those and, and how to you know, squeeze out much more performance out of every out of every short. And of, of course, one of the critical things here is how you do cross chart execution. This is where um, the entire blockchain space is right now figuring this out. You know, I anticipate that within uh, a few years, this is no longer going to be uh, an issue in the Web3 space. Um, right now, um, you know, it'll be uh, really great innovations that will arrive that will help us break through this bottleneck. Uh, the next thing that I want to call out is being able to do computation over platform data. This is basically one of the really critical components out of any storage network in, in, in computing, which is to be able to um, store a lot of data and then be able to run some function over that data, to be able to do some computation and some useful, useful work uh, on top of the data that you're storing. Uh, so this is more than smart contracts. Uh, this is uh, being able to issue um, arbitrary jobs to be able to run on top of, of data. And 
Um, there are many different potential architectures for achieving this. A lot of us in, in the community think that we should be pushing towards um, structures that are as scalable as the web to clouds, but of course very viable. Um, so we take uh, inspiration from both blockchains and from uh, systems that help scale greatly in, in the web to and the cloud, um, and try and marry the, the approaches to get a, a best of both, both world systems. Um, there's also some extremely interesting systems that are emerging with um, very viable computation, so um, provable systems, and of course, um, homomorphic encryption, where you can get um, actually do uh, computations that are entirely private um, on, on public clouds. Uh, so all of these are elements that, that our community is playing with, uh, that we're thinking through, um, and that over time will help us do, uh, will help us achieve uh, computation over, over data. Now, of course, in order to do this, we need some, uh, some folks in, in a chain, we need to be able to do some uh, smart uh, uh, programming. Um, so, so that's also going to be a, a really great component. Uh, we also uh, think there's going to be a, a lot of innovations needed in just uh, improving groups. So this is both uh, making new kinds of uh, core apps and, and, and posts and making them faster and more efficient. Um, and of course then being able to do uh, the, the broader arbitrary computation through, uh, through very viable um, computing. So being able to kind of write proofs against any program and then kind of being, being able to run that over data on top. And uh, there's also an, an amazing set of developments that have been happening in the last couple of months. The community has been gathering around the ideas of um, using programmable smart contracts. The current plan and trajectory that the community is discussing is to add a component that we're calling the FBM, uh, and then to also have a layer of compatibility with EBM. Now, one of the really key things here is that we want to be able to do and model cross-chain um, uh, computation, of course, and be able to, uh, to do it across charts and cloud when as that, as that emerges. All of this is going to be a super interesting and exciting area of work. So if you're interested in this kind of work, uh, definitely check out the repositories and so on. Uh, and there's going to be a talk about FDM uh, given later in the week uh, by our So I recommend you check that one out. There's a lot of like utility out of getting uh, smart contracts on platform, of course. Uh, things like uh, all of the power of programmability that we've seen in Ethereum and in other networks. It'll also enable much easier bridges across blockchains and so on. And you know, in the long run, we want to kind of build up this this larger scale data science platform. There's already uh, a lot of groups uh, pushing in this direction. And especially shout out to uh, NBFS and the Nebula team who built a notebook uh, system connected to to Cloud. Uh, and last, uh, I want to leave you with uh, some thoughts on the metaverse uh, on Cloud. So as we, you know, we've been building the metaverse for uh, for many decades, building little bits and pieces at a time uh, through many different kinds of games and online experiences. And nowadays it's getting a lot more sophisticated with 3D environments and games and open worlds and so on. And we're starting to blend blockchains and the Web3 primitives into, into these systems. This is a really exciting time. The, the whole world is, is um, uh, looking ahead to, to the emergence of the metaverse. There's many large scale companies starting to look to invest extremely heavily and deeply into it. Uh, many large companies want to completely own a very close uh, version of the metaverse, and that, that would be a really bad outcome. So it's super critical that today um, we build an open Web3 enabled uh, metaverse. So I really encourage all of you to get involved and, and help build out all of the layers that need to be built um, to make this a reality. Uh, and I'm super proud to, to, uh, to say that I think the platform community is helping spearhead the, uh, the development. I think that the metaverse is going to be built and locked open through the use of NFTs. So I think that NFTs, by creating the notion of property on the blockchain, um, help give people uh, some association with artifacts and spaces um, that they then want to interconnect and use in an open way. Uh, you want all of those pieces to be able to interact with each other and you want to be able to use them wherever you want, not just in, in some old dark structures. So we've also started to see uh, a lot of really interesting open virtual worlds being generated. So special shout out to CryptoVoxels and Decentraland, but so a lot of others. Um, a lot of amazing creativity has been poured into, into these environments, creating some really cool spaces. A different approach, uh, which I think is also going to be super interesting, where uh, different rooms are being built in a composable way, where you can sort of create a room um, on, in isolation, um, and then mint the room itself as an NFT, and then be able to connect those rooms to other rooms and larger spaces over time. Uh, you know, a huge shout out to many groups that are, that are doing this, where all these NFTs are uh, sort of uh, in PowerPoint, and you know, one of them is uh, is the one team that, that I mentioned earlier. So over time, I think these rooms and objects and artifacts and spaces are all going to be connected uh, through, through Web3. 
and that global's ability is going to help us uh, create a, a very open metaverse. Um, I don't know if there's going to be like a huge explosion in terms of usage yet this year, but I think a ton of primitives are going to be built out now. A lot of the components are going to be experimented with. A lot of people will start making the first few games and environments probably within two or three years. This is going to uh, explode in a huge way. So I think right now, um, the people building these layers uh, are, are deciding what the future will look like. Um, and it's really exciting and really cool that a lot of those, those developers and groups are building, uh, choosing to build with that point. So, uh, yeah, it, this is an open invitation to all of you to come build the metaverse uh, with us. Come join us in, in the Platform Network and, and build some like really exciting things. Uh, and if you're a builder, uh, an artist, an architect, uh, or a gamer, there's this really cool 3D build bounty posted by, by Mona where you get to build you know, the Platform Forum. You can submit a room and mint the room and uh, collect the bounty we're doing. So come check it out and maybe someday eventually gonna go and hang out in a space like this. I think this is one of those super amazing rooms that one of the amazing artists uh, is building for the for the forum. Alright. Okay, so that's it for me. Again, happy birthday to the Falcon Network. It's been an amazing year. Be sure to check out everything that's been happening through the uh, recordings of the, the conference. Uh, last week, Cloud One Orbit was really amazing, so be sure to check all that out. Yeah, thank you. Well, and uh, looking forward to really another amazing year. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Have a great rest of the conference, and see you around. Take care. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Bennett, for giving us such an amazing presentation. We hope that next year you will bring us such an amazing presentation and discussion.